Pushkinism. And, and, and again, uh, there was another film called Filling the Void, uh, which is also a beautiful film. By the way, there's this little film, Menasha. Anybody here see Menasha? Which I, I thought was a, a remarkable film. And who knew that this whole development of Haredi cinema? You know, it's unbelievable. And female directors of these all Haredi cast movies. But you know, this is interesting because a few years ago there was this movie that became celebrated in the New York Times. It was called The Gatekeepers. Uh, it was a nasty anti Israel movie done by a leftist who was my daughter's teacher at IDC and I did my research on the film, and it was so biased. Um, and, and it turns out that whatever he was preaching in the movie had already been done by Sharon, it's a long story, so I caught him, and I wrote a whole column on it. But the thing is, is that he was in the top 10 in the New York Times. So there's almost a reward mechanism, whereas do a movie that beats up Israel, do a movie from the left, and you'll be celebrated on the New York Times. This is one of my, um, I do think that Schindler's List is a great movie. And, and it's a great movie because it's, it's about the seductive power of goodness. It's about how someone can turn around his life and make a difference. And I was so much looking forward to Munich when that came out. How many people here saw Steven Spielberg's Munich about the Olympic massacre? Yeah, it was a horrible film. I, I, I really thought it was one of Spielberg's least um, artistically worthy oh, films. Right. And yeah, because it was written by uh, Tony uh, Kushner, who is no relation, no relation to the White House Kushners. Uh, and, and in fact is a, uh, a self-described communist, he's very open about it, and an Israel hater, and, and a self-hating Jew. And it's such a shame. Uh, there are people talk about this all the time, and I know there are other people here in the, in the business, but Otto Preminger, who made Exodus, right, in 1966, um, you know, with Paul Newman and Eva Marie saying, pretty pro-Israel movie, to say the least. He has, had, was developing all his life a, a project called, written by Dan Kurtzman called Genesis 1948, which was about the war for independence. And their script's kicking around. That would be a great movie. But the problem is in the Israeli film industry, one of my nephews is breaking into the Israeli film industry. Most of the people are on the far left, like they are here. And do you know anybody in the nationalist uh, idea with, with Israel who would make that kind of movie, showing the incredible miracles and heroism of Israel's struggle for independence? I do. David Mamet. Yeah. Interesting point. Yeah, I met him a few times. He was really eager to do film on Entebbe. But yeah. I think the other one is even more interesting because it's the formation of Israel and people sort of overlook the real miracle war of Israel was that one. And, he, and, and let me, and this is true, this is one of those things that we do on our, we have a broadcast that's been our most popular history program ever, which is about the birth of the state of Israel. The war for independence, 6,000 people lost their lives. The Israeli population at the time was 600,000. That would be the equivalent today of 3 million Americans dying. More people died in the war for independence than all of Israel's other wars combined. And that sacrifice, uh, people say, well, what right does Israel have to exist? That right. Amen. On that note, I want to thank our dear friend, our friend of the Jewish people, the Jewish, our friend of America, and I want to ask the rabbi, are we allowing time for questions? Or your call?